I'd like to do today is to uh, talk a little bit about Ration Guard and Hay Guard, two of the products that Cisco purchases from International Stock Food. Uh, and I've chosen Ration Guard and Hay Guard to uh, highlight here for the show as well because they're products that are uh, fairly new and, and that people can use uh, quite frequently. We've had good success with uh, selling those through the Cisco organization. First of all, let's talk a little bit about microbiology. Uh, the mode of action of both of those products are that they prevent mold and yeast from growing. So what does it take for mold and pathogenic yeast to grow? Well, there are four things. First, they need a food source, which are sugars or tra carbohydrates. Secondly, they need oxygen. Third, they need moisture. And fourthly, they need warm temperatures and humidity. Typically, the temperature needs to be 60 degrees or higher for mold and yeast to continue to grow. So how do we stop mold and yeast? There's really two ways. One, we can cover the entire mixture with propionic acid, and that kills them. It's a contact kill. It's like bleach. Anything it touches, it kills. If it doesn't touch it, it doesn't have an effect on it. Or secondly, we can take care of mold and yeast growth by taking away the oxygen source, and that then makes them die and does not allow them to reproduce and have a very short life span. So let's talk about uses for Ration Guard. First of all, we use Ration Guard in total mixed rations on dairy herds. And the reason we use it there, uh, because the TMRs, as we use oxygen to the silage, it generates the mold, the dormant mold and yeast that are there, have the ability then to fire back off and they generate heat. So the dormant mold and yeast spores awaken, the mold and yeast burn calories, and that makes heat. Secondly, as we see increased temperatures and humidity, which we've seen a lot of here this summer, when the combination of the temperature and humidity equals 140, so if we had 70 degree temperature, 70 percent humidity, we know that we're stressing both the animals and we're also stressing the feed source. And that causes increased mold and yeast activity as well. Uh, third addition of byproducts encourages mold growth when we have wet brewers, wet distillers. Uh, those are high carbohydrate products, and that also encourages mold and yeast growth. Just remember that a hot total mix ration equals less intake, and if they have less intake, they have less production. One of the big places we use ration guard as well is in the manufacturing sweet feeds, and molasses level cat feeds, high molasses level horse feeds. And ration guard is the perfect addition to those uh, from a couple of different standpoints. We see sweet feeds molding because we have a higher level of moisture than other feeds. We also see high sugar content due to the addition of the molasses. And typically there's air trapped in the bags or they enter the bags during storage. Um, and especially this summer again with the high temperature and humidity that we saw, um, I've run into a lot of circumstances where people had significant mold problems uh, when they were not treating it with something. Two products again basically that are available to treat sweet feeds, one is propionic acid, the other would be ration guard. The disadvantage with propionic acid in sweet feeds is there is an odor to it and we have to put enough product on that sometimes it does act as a, uh, it reduces the palatability of the products and we reduce the intakes. Uh, the note down at the bottom says some type of mold control product must be used in manufacturing the sweet feeds. A lot of guys try to get enough through the molasses to treat the feeds. That's not a good option. We need to have enough uh, preservative in the molasses to take care of the molasses. We need to physically add product to the feeds to help stop the mold and yeast. The other thing Ration Guard does in sweet feeds, typically we see a buildup on the equipment because we're providing sticky uh, product molasses and we're providing a nice, uh, typically shiny metal spot for that to stick to. And we do see some buildup of textured feeds. Ration Guard reduces uh, the buildup in equipment because it works like a surfactant and it, it actually reduces surface tension, meaning that the product will not stick as much to the equipment. It's very effective in that, in that way also. So what is Ration Guard? Ration Guard is a patented formula that contains sulfur compounds and a scavenged oxygen within the ration. The sulfur components form an oxygen depleting gas and it will spread through the feed or through the ration to some degree. This action slows down mold and yeast. There's an ingredient listing here that shows you the ingredients that are in there. And you can see that Ration Guard also contains a cherry aroma. If we're doing 
four speeds or we're doing cat feeds, it does give it a little bit of a, of a positive smell um, with the cherry aroma. So uses for ration garden. Uh, first of all, cold winter ration, we would go in at one to two pounds per ton. Uh, in extreme conditions, we might go to three. We put forage in first, add the ration garden to the DMR. Uh, horse and sweet feeds would use two to three pounds per ton. Calf sweet feeds, two to three pounds per ton. Pelvic feeds, uh, ration guard works great for a mold inhibitor on pelvic feeds uh, at two pounds per ton. And then we go to show feeds, two to three pounds per ton as well. A little bit of research behind ration guard. Sweet feed research, this was done in Kansas State when Dr. Banky, uh, they're, they're doing a test here on steamrolled corn, no treatment for 10 pounds of propionic acid and two pounds of ration guard. And if you look at the day 56 numbers, you can see the untreated corn uh, was very, very high in mold, and the steamrolled corn treated with propionic acid at 10 pounds per ton was, was did a good job of controlling it, as well as two pounds of ration guard. Now keep in mind, 10 pounds of propionic acid would run 10 to 12 dollars per ton. Two pounds of ration guard is going to run in a four to five dollar per ton range, and again, it has the positive effects of no odor, no uh, palatability issues, and it does help reduce the bill of money. Uh, this is another one on uh, a horse sweet feed. If you look in the bottom left hand corner, you can see what the actual mixture was. You can see the control with no mold control products in. The second one is propionic acid at two pounds per ton. And the third one is ration guard at one pound per ton. And you can see it again by not treating at week 12, we had significant mold growth at 64,000 CFUs. Uh, by adding propionic acid, it reduced 3,300. And uh, with ration guard, it was down to. 1,000. So it, what this trial shows us is that one pound of ration guard is as effective as two pounds of propionic acid, again, uh, bringing the cost to similar to what it would be uh, treatment cost, but also uh, we again have the positive effects of ration guard. This is a TMR fuel that we did in Florida, 7,000 cows, and you can see how ration guard helped reduce the temperatures. And again, if we reduce the temperatures in the feed, we get better intake and that produces better milk production. This is a, another one that shows uh, the average weekly temperature. And you can see, again, a significant reduction. And this was in July through September of 99 that this trial was done. Hill top dairy temperatures on a 10 week average. You can see for the 10 week average, we were 4.3 degrees cooler. And we know that by having cooler feed, we get better intakes again and more milk production. This is the uh, temperatures average from 2 to 6 p.m., the hottest part of the day. And again, you can see 3.4 degrees cooler by adding ration or This is a green where they're going out and basically just uh, uh, doing green chop at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then we're looking at the gain in the temperature. And this green chop is fed every morning at 11 o'clock. Temperatures were taken at feeding 2 o'clock, 5 o'clock p.m a.m. the next morning. So the first 15 days there was no treatment, the second 15 days we did ration guard at two pounds per ton. And you can see here the average gain in temperature we didn't treat it. So the total gain from 11 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, difference again is 5.5 degrees by using ration guard, so a significant improvement as well. Okay, ration guard said there, there's, there's several uses for it. Your customers that are that are making the feed products, that would be the, the primary target for Ration Guard. I think the, the feed mills that we have on it love it. It works very well, um, and it helps stop the mold product problems in their feed. Okay, secondly, we'll move on to Hay Guard. Hay Guard was uh, reintroduced this year. We had a previous Hay Guard product years ago. We took it off the market for a while, and we reintroduced Hay Guard this past year with a new formula designed specifically for Hay producers. So hay guard is, is a formula containing a combination of sulfur compounds. You can see the ingredient listing down at the bottom left hand corner. Again, produces gas, which limits the plant cell respiration, reduces the temperature after baling, grabs the oxygen, the oxygen trapped inside the bale, and inhibits the growth of mold and yeast. The other option basically for hay is propionic acid again. And as a matter of fact, I just got a call this morning from a guy in Tennessee who's been using propionic gas and wants to get away from it because of the corrosion issues and the smell. Uh, the growth does give off a vinegary smell, which especially horse people don't like in their hay. So when we compare our product to probe, it's actually
typical, usually it would cost less than pro propionic acid. We use two pounds per ton up to 25%. With propionic acid, the rate varies with the moisture. It's easy to apply. It's not EPA regulated like propionic acid is. It's odor free and safe, and it's a low application. If we look at 22% moisture hay, there's rough numbers on cost. But if we look at hay guard at two pounds per ton, propionic acid at 22% moisture would be recommended at eight to 10 pounds per ton. Uh, I'm guessing the retail cost of hay guard at around 250 a pound, propionic acid is dollar to dollar 35 a pound this year. So you can see that there's a difference in cost per treated ton from five dollars on hay guard to eight to ten dollars on propionic acid. The other thing you'll see with with hay guard versus prop is you'll have greener, softer hay. You can physically feel it, see it. It's going to make a nicer look of hay, less bleaching, better color. Advantages for the guys that are doing custom baling: hay guard is EPA, uh, like the buffered acids are, so they don't have to have a custom applicator license or any of that. How it works, this was a study done in Canada. 25% moisture hay, the, uh, the typical curve and heating from the time we bail that hay until the time it stabilizes. And again, you can see 22 degrees cooler at days five to eight. By keeping the bales cooler, we have less chance of caramelization, uh, heating the bales and hay that ends up not being a sellable or, or readable hay. Dry matter losses by using hay uh, nothing. You can see that we've reduced the dry matter loss by 50%. Dry matter intake, this is a four week step free, only eight pounds per day more with hay guard treated hay compared to untreated hay. Again, it makes it a more palatable product. This is a milk production trial that was done in Utah, Utah State University. And if you look at the pounds of milk per cow per day compared to products. So cows fed hay guard treated hay produced two and a half pounds more milk than cows fed acid treated hay. So that is the presentation I have regarding ration guard and hay guard use and that's basically what I'll be uh, highlighting for products at the show this year. Please drop me an email or give me a call. My phone number is 5248 -0641. My email address is greg at isfusa.com. Thank you for your attention. Look forward to seeing you at the show. Thanks, Greg. That, that's that's really nice. Um, let's uh, because we've pre-recorded this. Uh, can you go over? Let's give everybody your phone number one more time and your email address. All right. My phone number is five seven four two four eight zero six four one. And my email address is greg, G-R-E-G, at I-S-F, U-S-A. And that stands for International Stock Food, USA.com. Okay, thank you.